Hello students, welcome to EPG Parshala. Myself, Dr. Ashish, I'm a scientist at Institute of Nanoscience and Technology, Mohali, Punjab. Today I'm going to discuss module on hydrogen bonding interactions and hydrophobic interactions under paper nanobiotechnology. So the objective of the module is to learn two very special interactions. One is hydrogen bonding, another one is hydrophobic interactions. And these two interactions are predominant in many biomolecules like protein, DNA, and it is particularly useful uh, when it comes to protein folding, then uh, polynucleotide folding. So this module, we will go quite deep into hydrogen bonding and how to control the hydrogen bonding in different solvents and we will look into much more in details the functional group profile in different solvents for hydrogen bonding. As far as hydrophobic uh, effect is concerned, this is the most complex interactions to understand. And we would take a very different approach to understand the hydrophobic interactions. We look into the structure of water first of all uh, in details because that's also one of the very complex uh, solvent to understand and then we will decipher one by one the hydrophobic interactions. Hydrogen bonding is a very important non-covalent interaction and this is very much prevalent in various biomolecules. Let's say when you talk about DNA double helical structure. So uh, there you have uh, the backbone, sugar backbone which runs and then you have those bases. So the base inside the core of the polynucleotide, uh, the DNA, they form this hydrogen bonding. The A, A and T base pair, they form double hydrogen bonding. G and C, guanine and cytosine, they form triple hydrogen bonding in array. So this is very important and it is the hydrogen bonding that only stabilizes the DNA. So when we, when we melt DNA, so we rupture the hydrogen bonding. Since this non-covalent interaction is also reversible, it comes back. So you know, this is very important. And when you look into protein, so let's say when you look into protein secondary structures, so in the secondary structure, let's say you have alpha helix or beta sheet. So they have very unique hydrogen bonding. So in alpha helix, when you have this helix like that, so there are some residue, amino acid residue, they actually very specifically do hydrogen bonding. Their conformation becomes such that they are actually predisposed to form this bonding. Or in beta sheet, they, they also form such a uh, secondary structure, then their uh, hydrogen bonding get optimized. So we would look much more in details um, about these particular interactions. Hydrogen bonding is a special kind of dipole-dipole interaction. You can see there are three examples given here. In one case, chloride ion is a ion is uh, interacting with a dipole that is water and in another case two water molecules are hydrogen bonded in another case there is water molecule that is interacting with the pi electron cloud of benzene ring so it's a quadruple and water interactions and you can see and definitely this ion water into chloride ion water interaction of is of more strength than the last ones well Another factor to consider is that here you see this hydrogen bonding is linear in the first case. In the other cases, it has some angle involved. So theoretically, the linear hydrogen bonding is strongest. The hydrogen bonding may also acquire some covalent character in even if it is very strong because if you look at this example where DH is the molecule which has some hydrogen atom. So that actually donates the hydrogen atom to A. So DH is interacting with A and D is giving away its hydrogen. D is having a delta minus and hydrogen is becoming delta positive and A is actually pulling the hydrogen towards itself. So D is here hydrogen bond donor and A is the acceptor. Now hydrogen bonding in the gas phase, the energetics, the double delta G of Hydrogen bonding depends on alpha and beta. Now alpha here is the hydrogen bond donor strength and that is 
the value of which comes between 0 to 5, 5 being the highest and beta is the hydrogen bond acceptor strength that is the value between 0 to 10, 10 being the highest. Next table shows the properties of different hydrogen bonded interactions. So here we chose the system DH which is get doing hydrogen bonding with A and D here is the hydrogen bond donor that is hydrogen bond acid and A is the hydrogen bond base or hydrogen bond acceptor. Now there are three possibilities here you see that there can be different types of strong moderate or weak hydrogen bonding you can see the bond energy involved that is in the case of strong hydrogen bonding it can be 60 to 120 so that means in that case they acquire some covalent character in it because as we have learned from earlier module we initially said non-covalent means less than 25 kilojoule per mole but yes in this case it can have some covalent character in weak case the weak hydrogen bonding it can be less than 12 kilojoule per mole and where there is a strong hydrogen bonding then in that case the bond length between hydrogen and the hydrogen bonding acceptor that actually comes down as compared to the weak hydrogen bonding and as you also see we just spoke about in previous slide about bond angle the for the strong hydrogen bonding tends to be more linear so bond angle is closing towards you know, 180 degree and the weak hydrogen bonding this is perpendicular it's around 90 degree to 150 degree and you can follow the hydrogen bonding looking at the infrared spectra vibration stretching mode so in the case of strong hydrogen bonding you can see that there is a 25 percent reduction in the web number and also nmr you can distinguish between the you know, strong and moderate hydrogen bonding different geometries of hydrogen bond when you have one particular donor and multiple hydrogen bond acceptor available so the first example shows linear hydrogen bonding the second one is bent where the dh and a they stay in a particular angle and then you can have something like donating so there are two acceptors coming together and it is called donating bifurcated or the acceptor also can accept in a bifurcated geometry it can also have trifurcated or three center bifurcated geometry for hydrogen bonding in all the cases these are all primary hydrogen bonding interactions because the interactions is between those two atoms which are directly into hydrogen bonding we see that there is also secondary hydrogen bonding interaction involved when you take an array of this hydrogen bonding donor or hydrogen bonding acceptor together you can see in the first left side example this is the array of all the hydrogen bonding donor taken together and which are forming a hydrogen bond with all array of hydrogen bonding acceptor so here apart from the primary hydrogen bonding between the hydrogen and hydrogen bonding acceptors you can see that there is also secondary hydrogen bonding interactions in the in a diagonal relationship which is attractive in nature but in the right side when you have dad in the molecule that means you have put one hydrogen bonding donor one acceptor one donor and then you are putting the complementary hydrogen bonding ada you can see that in between that one particular hydrogen that has primary hydrogen bonding interaction but it it has two secondary hydrogen bonding interaction where there are two attractive secondary bonding hydrogen bonding interaction but there are also two repulsive secondary bonding interaction and because of these two repulsive secondary hydrogen bonding interaction between these neighboring hydrogen this is less favored less favored situation so it's always ddd which is pairing with aaa in hydrogen bonding that is energetically more stronger than dad with ada below we show the example of the dna base pair adenine and thymine so you can see this actually does push pull hydrogen bonding in this case adenine and thymine case this has primary hydrogen bonding involved here and in the case of gc you see the delta g is minus 24.5 
and in this case also there is push pull hydrogen bonding involved however there are three hydrogen bonding in array that's why the delta g is more negative in this particular case so what are the parameters to control this alpha and beta so what is alpha alpha is hydrogen bonding donating parameter and what is beta 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 is hydrogen bonding accepting parameter so now if you have to donate hydrogen then you need to uh, have the hydrogen connected to some very electronegative atom let's say if hydrogen is connected to oxygen or fluorine such type of type of cases that donating ability increases right and on the other hand if you have uh, the if you have to accept the hydrogen that means i'm talking about a that is a hydrogen group hydrogen bonding acceptor then they have to if you have to accept that hydrogen you have to donate your lone pair so that lone pair the electron cloud should be much more polarizable in order to have that um, uh, hydrogen bond hydrogen um, abstracted so it is important that the, the because of the polarizability effect so you, your that particular uh, that particular atom should not have much uh, that should not be much more electronegative or it should not be connected to um, very electronegative uh, ion so, so let's talk about also there is s double bond o but this o the lone pair sitting on o can also be polarizable in this particular case and because they are connected to sulfur and that can be given so they are uh, very good uh, hydrogen bonding acceptor the comparative diagram of hydrogen bond donor and hydrogen bond acceptor let's discuss about hydrogen bond donor first as you know the hydrogen bond donor is determined by the parameter alpha which is between 0 to 5 5 means it is very good hydrogen bond donor and the hydrogens which are connected to very electronegative oxygen atoms they are very easily they can be donated and um, towards hydrogen bonding so you see this trifluoroethanol is very good hydrogen bonding donor in that case now, on the other hand this non the hydrogen where it is connected to carbon they are very poor hydrogen bond donor the corresponding alpha value is low now if you talk about hydrogen bond acceptor you can see the on the left side the beta values are low for very highly electronegative fluorine or chlorine attached to the aromatic unit but as you go on the right hand side the oxygen atom which is in a carbonyl or amide or so bond those oxygens are very good hydrogen bonding acceptor that means they are they can their lone pair with their lone pair they can actually take up the hydrogen so the beta value is corresponding higher we have shown that if you plot beta in the x axis and alpha in the y axis and you can have correspondingly diagram like the phase diagram you can see that as you go on higher beta value and higher alpha value the bluish tinge of the diagram that becomes more and that corresponds to if you plug it into this double delta g value that is minus alpha beta you see it becomes really more negative so that means this hydrogen bonding as you go towards higher alpha and beta that gets more favorable and this is a very ideal situation where there it is in a solvent where it doesn't participate in hydrogen bonding or it can be in solid state or completely non-polar solvent so there is no solvent competition so there is no solvent competition you can say that as you increase alpha and beta the hydrogen bonding becomes more favorable but normally the hydrogen bonding in a competitive situation there is uh, also dissolvation so what happens is that the dh that particular molecule that is also solvated even the hydrogen bonding acceptor that is also solvated at as and then you can have this complexation and then they form the hydrogen bonding and the corresponding solvent molecule then they also participate and in hydrogen bonding among themselves so the corresponding double delta g expression becomes complicated if you take into account the corresponding alpha and beta of the solvents and final expression of double delta g can be given as minus 
negative of the difference of alpha of donor minus alpha of the solvent and also the beta of acceptor minus beta of the solvent so solvent here is very important and we will see now in the next couple of slides how the solvents they change the diagram of this alpha and beta and affect the solvents you see here it is given more pictorially that a is solvated b is solvated and then the dissolvation happens a and d they form the hydrogen bonding and the solvent they get into into the hydrogen bonding and if you plot it you can see there are four different quadrant and the red quadrants are the one where the solute is interacting with the solvent the those quadrant hydrogen bonding is unfavorable but the violet color one that's where the on the top right the solute solute interaction dominates that's where hydrogen bonding is favorable or in the bottom left there is also more solvophobic interaction because of this solvent solvent interaction and this is where your solvent uh, the alpha and solvent alpha is actually more than the alpha of the dh so in that case it is solvophobic interaction favorable so this slide shows these functional group interaction profiles in different solvents the top one is the dmso and as we know dmso has this so group because of that the oxygen of dmso is a very good hydrogen bonding acceptor so the beta of solvent beta s is very high close to 10 8.9 so because of that you can see the blue region they become very much negligible and they are completely pushed towards right side and almost all the places you have the red that means hydrogen bonding is unfavorable in dmso so but if you talk about chloroform you can see chloroform has a hydrogen which can be also donated so it has a reasonably recent hydrogen bonding donating alpha s is 2.2 in that case and so any of the hydrogen bonding donating group if you take in chloroform medium and they are better than chloroform in that case you can see the green line so if you are doing hydrogen bonding complexation in chloroform that is only be possible when you have uh, your hydrogen bonding donor which has alpha more than 2.2 in the case of dimethyl ether you see they oxygen in ether that can also participate being an hydrogen bond acceptor and they have a reasonably good beta s that is 5.3 and that is the reason the blue region in the function group profile has shifted on the right hand side and if you are doing hydrogen bonding complexation in dimethyl ether you must have hydrogen bonding acceptor which should have actually beta which is more than beta s 5.3 so then then you can actually get in that blue region the hydrogen bonding pattern now if we look at the functional group profile in water there is a different situation you we see that water has uh, both what hydrogen bond donating ability and hydrogen bonding accepting ability because presence of this oxygen and hydrogen and uh, because of that reason the hydrogen bonding is in water is possible only when the functional group which are involved in hydrogen bonding complexation they are that they have very high beta or alpha value something like trifluoroethanol around they can form hydrogen bonding with uh, let's say so or po group or in other scenario there can be also hydrogen bonding formation due to solvophobic uh, interaction where the functional group with very low alpha or beta value they can also form so you can see this clearly two distinct blue region in the functional group diagram but if you now replace the one of the hydrogen of water with ch3 group that means you perform the hydrogen bonding complexation in methanol the situation becomes completely different you can see you can that means what happens is that methanols that uh, beta that means the hydrogen bonding accepting ability in methanol they remain more or less same gets better but hydrogen bond donating ability of the methanol goes down and you can see the blue region in due to the very low alpha and beta that completely diminishes but however you can still perform 
and get some hydrogen bonding complexation if you are using the functional group which are having very high alpha or beta value. So next we are going to discuss about hydrophobic interactions. This hydrophobic interaction is very prevalent in uh, protein and polynucleostide structures and uh, entire protein folding that depends majorly on these hydrophobic interactions. Even on the phospholipid bilayer walls, the, the hydrophobic interaction is very prevalent. Also in chemistry, we see the host gas complexation that is also a contribution of hydrophobic interaction. So if we understand that hydrophobic interaction simply is that if you take this host which is solvated and you see that water molecule in this case are surrounding that host and inside the host uh, there is even though it is hydrophobic cavity it cannot be vacant there is some structured water molecule inside where they are not very comfortable and you also have solvated guest where this guest is surrounded by all the water molecules again this guest is also hydrophobic now the hydrophobic guest is also not comfortable within surrounded by water and it's like forming a hole in the water so now when they are taken together the guest molecule that goes inside the cavity of host and the water molecule structured water molecule inside the cavity they get released so there is a entropic gain due to that structured water release what is governing the hydrophobic binding of the organic guest in aqueous solution okay so as we know the hydrophobic interaction is very complex to understand and this is one of the very complex uh, interactions in all the interactions which you have till date dis uh, discussed. So we will go very structure wise. First of all, since this hydrophobic interaction comes into effect when there is water, so we must know the structure of water. That is very important. So we will first learn the structure of water. Next, what we will do, we will go a little opposite of hydrophobic interaction and to understand that better, will do first hydrophobic hydration. So we will take a non-polar solute and we will put it into a polar solvent okay, and see what is the energetics corresponding to that. And once we understand that particular energetics which is supposed to be unfavorable, then we will reverse the procedure and what we will do is that we will get all those non-polar solute together. And that's what is hydrophobic interaction. So we have a different approach to understand this. Let's see. Water has been always a very special liquid. First of all, water has very small molar volume because of the high electronegative oxygen. And if you put it in this term, cohesive energy density, you see that is delta H vaporization minus RT divided by Vm because the molar volume of water is very small. It has a very high cohesive energy density as compared to many other solvent you see ethylene glycol to hexane water has the lowest molecular molar volume that's the reason CED is very high something like 550 calorie per centimeter cube but in hexane it is almost like one tenth of that another important feature of water is that it is very structured and you can see the structure of hexagonal ice and uh, all the hydrogen and oxygen of water they are involved in the hydrogen bonding however in the next slide as we see this even though they are hydrogen bonded as we know that they are um, these non-covalent interactions are very dynamic and they break and uh, form rapidly and actually this dynamics is in you know, picosecond time scale but however when you break the hydrogen bond to make two separate water molecule you can see that you may get entropic gain because of from one to two molecule but enthalpically it is uh, unfavorable so overall the delta g becomes positive but when you make hydrogen bonding from two water molecules you can see the delta s may go negative but because of delta h that the enthalpic factor the delta s uh, delta g becomes negative so uh, this hydrogen bonding in water that is always a enthalpy and entropy trade-off however in the next slide as we see this even though they are hydrogen bonded as we know that they are um, these non-covalent interactions are very dynamic and they break and uh, form rapidly and actually this dynamics is in you know, picosecond time scale 
but however when you break the hydrogen bond to make two separate water molecule you can see that you may get entropic gain because of from one to two molecule but enthalpically it is uh, unfavorable so overall the delta g becomes positive but when you make hydrogen bonding from two water molecules you can see the delta s may go negative but because of delta h that the enthalpic factor the delta s and delta g becomes negative so uh, this hydrogen bonding in water that is always a enthalpy and entropy trade off now we look at the hydrophobic hydration to in order to understand the hydrophobic effect so what we do is that we take a non polar solute and that non polar solute from the gaseous state we introduce into the water medium and see what is the effect so and uh, effect on thermodynamics so you can see in the image so you have these uh, solvent molecules and then you put this break away the solvent molecule structure so basically you disrupt the solvent solvent interaction and that will be reflected also by the cohesive energy density of the solvent if it is water so then the disruption will be large and then you put a red color this your nonpolar solute into it okay as soon as you into put the nonpolar solute into it because the presence of this uh, solvent around it it will start inducing dipole on the solute so there will be london dispersion now if you look at the thermodynamics of that you are you see for there are two different regime for organic solvent which has the ced already low and water the ced is very high you can see the delta g is more or less still negative for the organic solvent if you are introducing an nhn as a solute into it but in the case of water molecule you can see water as a solvent you can see if you introduce nhn this goes delta g becomes positive so since we have seen that hydrophobic hydration is not energetically favorable because you have got a non polar solute into water medium so you can actually think that if you now reverse the process that means get that hydrophobic solid back into something non polar solute back into some cavity which is also hydrophobic that would be energetically favorable so you basically that's what we are going to do so the tendency of the non polar molecules to stick together in the aqueous medium that is actually the hydrophobic interaction and it is basically a reversal of the hydrophobic hydration which is energetically not feasible so the reversal is energetically more favorable so you can see this example where you have this cavity of the host molecule and over there there are some so structured solvent molecule and you have introduced due to this hydro hydrophobic hydration this uh, non polar guest in water molecule let's say and they have they are solvated now as soon as you mix them together this non polar solute will go inside the cavity and it will release the water molecule and it has a very high k association constant delta g is negative delta h in that case is also negative and t delta s that is also negative but overall the delta g is more negative so let's summarize this module so what we have learned so far about hydrogen bonding and hydrophobic interactions so in hydrogen bonding first of all we learned different modes of hydrogen bonding well we got to know that linear form little bent form so which one will be energetically a little more stable so this idea we had we also got to know different geometry of hydrogen bonding like if it is uh, only one donor one acceptor or one donor two acceptor or the reverse and so that, that there are different complex hydrogen bonding we got to know about this different array of hydrogen bonding why if there are three donor hydrogen bonding donor together and other side act three acceptor they are more stable than if they have donor acceptor donor like that alternating donor acceptor pair for this array hydrogen bonding so we got to know about this and um, after that uh, after knowing that uh, the different hydrogen bonding pattern we also uh, understood or tried to understand look at the hydrogen bonding interaction in solvent because that becomes very important solvation plays a major role and when solvent participates in hydrogen bonding 
uh, things becomes really complicated. So we then uh, also incorporated in our double delta G term uh, alpha S and beta S and try to understand the functional group profile depending on different different solvents and uh, we also saw that when you put solvent into it so some area or some particular uh, functional group with some specified alpha and beta uh, they cannot form hydrogen bond only a particular quadrant when we looked into that that's the reason it, it actually hydrogen bonding happens and that that can happen on a very strong alpha beta uh, hydrogen bonding pair or it can also happen very uh, weak alpha beta this thing but that ha that happens due to solvophobic interaction and that's that has something to do that's the connection we had from uh, hydro hydrogen bonding to hydrophobic effect and hydrogen hydrophobic effect when we talked about we really looked into details and this is very important hydrogen hydrophobic effect we have seen that is important for uh, in biology in protein folding because in protein in the cavity where you have hydrophobic cavity you have some water molecules they don't want to stay there and they somehow you know stay very structured and they get released when um, you know, due to this hydrophobic effect we have also uh, uh, looked at the more in details the st structure of water and different parameters why water is so complex and then we slowly decipher uh, this hydrophobic effect first we understood how to do this hydrophobic hydration to get a non-polar solute into it and energetically which is not uh, favorable and then like such all, many systems we accumulate and then if all these non-polar uh, solute if they mingle together in a hydrophobic cavity and then they also release a lot of structured water and that is the uh, entropic gain we have and uh, this is how we have understood uh, hydrophilic and hydrophobic effect and when we talk about big protein molecules which has you know non-polar polar amino acids so what happens when it folds it actually puts all the polar amino acid outside and inside would be your uh, this hydrophobic amino acids that way it optimizes both its hydrophobic interactions and hydrogen bonding interactions with the solvent and uh, thereby it takes its native structure and uh, many of the enzyme as you know they are protein and then they also are in nanometer range 2 to 3 they are actually the actual uh, nanobiomolecules which can perform uh, a lot of different uh, complex uh, you know uh, task in our body or um, uh, in, in uh, any metabolic pathway so thanks for watching this module see you in the next module